This property has been in the family for 110 years and uh, was purchased by my great-grandfather in 1905. Yan Yan Gert West is 230 hectares or 570 acres and is located in the northeastern foothills of the Otway Ranges. Probably Yan Yan Gert West, uh, the name is derived from the Aboriginal word Yan Yan Gert, which means ever flowing water. I think that over the many hundreds of years that the European settlement has been around, we've done a lot of damage to the environment, and I think that we really need to redress those problems. So I think that here on this property, we're, we're trying to do our own bit towards that. Going back to pre-white settlement, of course, it was uh, under Aboriginal management and uh, the landscape was very different. There's been a big change in the hydrology of this landscape because the land has been overcleared and the swamps were drained and sometimes they did this in straight lines, which is not a natural meandering creek. But now we have a creek which is 30 metres deep and that's eroded right down to, bit, to the bedrock of sandstone and mudstone and we're now farming in that system and trying to manage that the best way we can. This is a family farm. The philosophy of our family is to develop a sustainable farming system which addresses the environmental issues, gives good agricultural production, improves the aesthetics and the well-being of not only the livestock but the people living in it and also the community th that uh, we inhabit. To me, sustainability is a trifecta. It's about environmental sustainability, it's about economic sustainability, and it's also about social sustainability. So on our farm, for example, environmental sustainability is where we've incorporated ecological infrastructure into the property. Economic sustainability is where that ecological infrastructure is supporting the economic income of the, of the actual property. And social sustainability is where we've created an environment that's really beautiful for us to work in and it's also a nice environment for the community to be driving through. To address the environmental issues on this property and to come up with a sustainable farming system, we've divided the property into five land classes and we've fenced along the land class boundaries and we've also revegetated along there with trees and shrubs. We've also fenced out the salt affected areas, the waterlogged areas, the areas of remnant tree growth and connected those into a web of trees right across the properties. And so this gives us a corridor and a well protected landscape that can improve the environmental outcomes enhance the agricultural production and provide new opportunities coming out of these plantings. On this property we've established more than 40,000 trees and shrubs over the last 23 years and that has created many benefits protecting the soils, protecting the stock but we're also generating some economic opportunity within these plantings. Agroforestry for example where we prune the trees to take off the limbs to generate clear wood and high value timber so that we can sell that into the future and then replant that tree so it is truly a sustainable system. We're, we're a bit of a McDonald's farm so we've got, we've got a, a lot of different types of animals here so obviously our main animals we run are sheep, they're first cross ewes that we run, they're, they're bred for their wool in there and we breed prime lambs for meat. We also introduced our packers to our flocks, so we use those now for guarding our sheep at lambing time. Our daughter Michelle and her partner Nick are building a cob studio, and this fits very well with the philosophy of the farm of using the natural resource in a responsible way that has a low environmental impact. The house is all solar passive designed. Um, it's designed for the sunlight in summer and the sunlight in winter. It's just been a really beautiful process to come back to the land that I grew up on and to be able to build something so special and be in such a beautiful environment to do it.